Welcome to the Game of Movie Recap channel. Today we're going to talk about the plot of a 2023 action film called Marlowe, starring Liam Neeson. In this movie, we follow the story of a private detective Philip Marlowe, becomes embroiled in an investigation involving a wealthy Californian family after a beautiful blonde hires him to track down her former lover. So, let's jump right into the story. But before we do, please support our channel by subscribing and hitting the notification bell for future updates. Now let's begin. Philip Marlowe, a skilled private detective, is approached by Claire Cavendish, a wealthy heiress and daughter of a famous actress. She hires Marlowe to discreetly locate her secret lover, Nico Peterson, a props director in the film industry. Claire explains that she lost contact with Nico, her last encounter being at a club called Corbata. Despite her attempts to find him, she discovered his home was deserted, with signs of neglect like uncancelled milk deliveries and accumulating newspapers, suggesting Nico's mysterious disappearance. Marlowe initiates his investigation by visiting Peterson's abandoned residence, which yielded no signs of life. Speaking with Peterson's neighbor, he learns that Nico had been missing for seven weeks, usually receiving visits from people seeking him due to debts or marital disputes, as he was known for his womanizing ways. Additionally, two Mexicans had inquired about him a week ago. To gather more details, Marlowe consults his friend Joe Green, a police officer, who reveals that Peterson has a troubled reputation as a cheater and troublemaker. Shockingly, Joe informs Marlowe that Peterson had been fatally struck in a hit-and-run incident in front of the Corbeta Club, leaving him unrecognizable due to severe facial injuries. Following Joe's revelation that Nico Peterson had been stabbed before his fatal accident, Marlowe ventured to the Corbeta Club to investigate further. However, he was apprehended by the guards. Marlowe then reconvened with Joe, who shared this suspicious piece of information. Armed with the latest details, Marlowe proceeded to the Cavendish family mansion. There he encountered Joseph O'Reilly, the family's financial advisor, embroiled in a heated dispute with Claire's mother. O'Reilly was on the verge of becoming an ambassador to England. Before Marlowe could share the news of Peterson's demise with Claire, Mr. Cavendish arrived unexpectedly, suspecting Marlowe to be his wife's new romantic interest. To deflect Mr. Cavendish's suspicions, Marlowe claimed he was hired to recover missing jewelry on behalf of Claire. Claire contested the report of Peterson's death, explaining that she had seen him in Tijuana on the same day he was found dead. She had been there to inspect horses as per her mother's request. According to the information she gathered, people believed Peterson was a movie producer and that the antiques he carried were film props. Marlowe, sensing that Claire was concealing some truth, declined to continue the investigation and departed. While leaving Claire's house, Marlowe encountered her mother, Dorothy Quincannon, who had inquisitively researched his background. Dorothy was eager to learn her daughter's motives, but Marlowe upheld his commitment to client confidentiality and refrained from disclosing any information. Growing increasingly intrigued by the case, Marlowe decided to visit Peterson's grave. There, he unexpectedly crossed paths with a woman paying her respects. Marlowe attempted to follow her but lost her in the process. Subsequently, Marlowe met with Joe to inquire about progress in the investigation into Peterson's hit-and-run death. No suspects had been apprehended so far. Joe speculated that Marlowe's client might be Peterson's younger sister, but Marlowe denied it, explaining that he was collaborating with someone aware that Peterson had staged his own death. Together, they uncovered irregularities in the case, including the internal identification process conducted by Corbeta Club manager Floyd Hansen and the hasty cremation of Peterson's body. The following day, Marlowe, with Joe's assistance, questioned Hansen about Peterson's death and shared his suspicion that the victim in the accident was not Peterson, but someone intentionally killed for a hidden reason. Hansen refuted Marlowe's claim, asserting that Peterson's sister had identified the deceased as her brother. When Marlowe inquired about Peterson's sister's whereabouts, Hansen directed him to contact the police. Afterward, Marlowe attempted to meet the woman he had spotted earlier, who claimed to be Lynn Peterson, Nico Peterson's sister. However, facing scrutiny from Hansen and his men, Lynn arranged a rendezvous with Marlowe at the cabana massage parlor for the evening. When Marlowe arrived at the location Lynn mentioned, he couldn't locate her but found himself confronting Hansen's henchmen instead. The following day, Dorothy extended an invitation to meet with Marlowe, attempting to sway him with a bribe in exchange for information about his investigation into Nico Peterson. Nevertheless, Marlowe remained resolute, refusing to disclose any details about his work with Claire. Dorothy then divulged a startling secret. The financial advisor Marlowe had encountered at her house, O'Reilly, was her lover. Dorothy hadn't revealed Claire as her daughter to O'Reilly. He believed Claire was Dorothy's niece. 
Dorothy harbored suspicions that Claire was romantically involved with O'Reilly, as he had recently purchased a studio to support her career, and the studio's payment came from Claire. She feared a conspiracy between O'Reilly and Claire to eliminate her and believed these incidents were somehow linked to Peterson's death. As their conversation concluded, Dorothy shared information from her private detective, revealing that Peterson had another lover named Amanda Togstev, an extra he frequented at the Pacific Pictures studio. In short, Marlowe crossed paths with Amanda Togstev at her workplace, surprisingly the same studio owned by Dorothy. Amanda recounted that Nico was a charismatic but non-committal individual in his relationships. Marlowe inquired about Nico Peterson's business dealings with some Mexicans, and Amanda disclosed that one profitable venture in Mexico involved the drug trade. Armed with this information, Marlowe revisited Nico Peterson's residence and commenced a search for potential clues. While examining a note on the table, he was caught by Lynn, who happened to be in the house. Lynn questioned Marlowe about his purpose and why he had entered her brother's home. Marlowe fabricated the story claiming to be a friend of Nico's hired to investigate his disappearance and reassuring Lynn that her brother was not deceased but had faked his death. Shortly thereafter, two Mexicans arrived, inquiring about a woman named Serena. Lynn attempted to flee the house with one man in pursuit, while Marlowe subdued the other assailant. Marlowe intervened just in time, aiming his gun at the man chasing Lynn. He interrogated him about Serena's identity and whereabouts, but after receiving no answers, Marlowe shot the man in the leg and continued pressing for information. Unexpectedly, Marlowe was struck from behind and lost consciousness. Upon regaining consciousness, he found himself facing a man named Cedric, who held a gun to him. Cedric then escorted Marlowe to meet Lou Hendricks, Nico's associate, who awaited them in Peterson's house. Hendricks extended an offer to return Marlowe to his residence, during which he disclosed that Peterson had been involved in the trade of Mexican tarantulas for him. Hendricks proposed a payment to Marlowe and requested that, if he ever located Nico in the future, he share the information, as there was unfinished business between them. However, Marlowe declined the offer, refusing to collaborate with Hendricks. Upon their arrival at what Marlowe believed to be his address, it turned out to be Joe's office. Marlowe intended to report Lynn's abduction and informed Joe that his gun had been stolen by two Mexicans. Joe then provided Marlowe with a replacement firearm of the same type, serving as an alibi in case the stolen weapon was used for illicit purposes. That evening, Detective Bernie Oles arrived at Marlowe's residence to investigate Lynn's disappearance, following Joe's request. Shortly after, Claire also visited Marlowe to inquire about the progress of Peterson's case. Claire shared a poignant part of her past, revealing that she had lived with nuns for six years, while her mother was involved with O'Reilly. After their conversation, Claire departed, mentioning an upcoming appointment. Intrigued, Marlowe discreetly trailed Claire's car, which led him to O'Reilly's house. Unexpectedly, Dorothy Quincannon arrived, seeking to confirm her suspicions about her daughter's affair. The following morning, Marlowe and Detective Bernie went to a river where they discovered Lynn's lifeless body. They then proceeded to the Corbeta Club, where they found two Mexican men's cars and Lou Hendricks' vehicle parked in the club's lot. This raised suspicions of their involvement in Lynn's demise. Detective Bernie requested Marlowe to take over the investigation since he lacked a warrant to proceed legally. Later that night, Marlowe infiltrated the Corbeta Club, sneaking into Floyd Hansen's room and catching him in the act of drug use. Marlowe posed questions about the connection between Hansen the Mexicans and Lou Hendricks, as well as their affiliation with the ambassador to England or Dorothy. Floyd invited Marlowe for a drink and secretly spiked it. As Marlowe feigned unconsciousness, Floyd disclosed that Lou Hendricks and the Mexicans were his illicit business partners who had swindled him by concealing some of his narcotics. Floyd also confessed to Lynn's murder, citing her non-compliance with his rules, considering Peterson's disappearance insignificant. Marlowe found himself in a room with Lou Hendrick, where two deceased Mexicans, victims of torture, lay. He befriended Cedric, Hendrick's driver, after they left him unguarded and released him from captivity. In another room, Floyd confronted Lou Hendricks, seeking information about Serena, who was last seen with Peterson and concealed the drugs. Hendricks disclosed that Serena was not a person, but an ornate statue in an aquarium. Marlowe and Cedric located a firearm in the warehouse and engaged in a shootout with Floyd. That's it. During the chaos, Cedric accidentally shattered the aquarium, causing the Serena statue to break and the drugs it concealed to be washed away. Enraged, Hendricks berated Cedric for the loss of the drugs, and Cedric retaliated by fatally shooting his boss. Following the ordeal, Marlowe and Cedric reported the incident to Detective Bernie. Returning home, Marlowe was unexpectedly visited by Peterson, 
who commended him for unraveling the ruse of his death. Marlowe shared the news of Lynn's death, to which Peterson showed little sorrow, as she was merely his stepsister. Peterson's reason for visiting was to ask Marlowe to deliver a message to Claire, inviting her to meet him at the Pacific Studios prop warehouse, where he possessed an item that Ambassador O'Reilly desired. Marlowe inquired about his relationship with Dorothy, given her request to locate Nico. Peterson claimed ignorance of Dorothy's motivations, suggesting she might be concerned that her daughter would steal her lover. Marlowe convened a meeting with Claire and Dorothy, aiming to address the unfolding issues. He enticed Claire with a story about Peterson running off with a girl named Serena, smuggling drugs along the way. However, Claire didn't betray any signs of jealousy, while Dorothy appeared disinterested. Claire eventually disclosed a secret. Dorothy had been dumped by O'Reilly, who was exploiting her to seduce the ambassador. Claire, filled with resentment, departed, and Marlowe followed. She assured him that she would send payment for his services soon and revealed that Peterson had requested her presence at the Pacific Studios prop warehouse later in the evening. In the evening, Cedric drove Marlowe to the warehouse, and along the way, Cedric divulged what he knew from his time working with Lou Hendricks. He shared that the warehouse in question was where Peterson had worked as a film props director, smuggling drugs and antique props from Mexico to England. Peterson had collaborated with Floyd, Lou Hendricks, and Ambassador O'Reilly, but it was likely that Peterson had ulterior motives, gathering evidence of their drug dealings to blackmail Ambassador O'Reilly. As Claire arrived at the warehouse, Peterson displayed a briefcase containing records of drug transactions, intending to use them for blackmail. Meanwhile, Marlowe also reached the warehouse. Upon learning of Marlowe's presence, Peterson opened fire, but Claire intervened, shooting Peterson instead. Claire ignited the warehouse, destroying all the drug transaction records in Peterson's remains. Marlowe allowed Claire to escape, then summoned the fire brigade and met Detective Bernie, providing misleading information about the incident. We're eager to hear your thoughts on the movie. Are you excited to see how the story develops? Do you have any theories about how it might conclude? Feel free to share your insights in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this recap, please show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing for more content, and sharing it with your friends and family. Don't forget to explore our channel for additional movie recaps tailored to your preferences, and be sure to enable notifications to stay updated on our upcoming videos. That's a wrap for now. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to catching you in the next one.